The Collectiones Canonum Dionysianae Latin, Dionysian collections of canons are the several collections of ancient canons prepared by the Scythian monk Dionysus, the humble, exiguous. They include the Collectio Conciliorum Dionysiana I, the Collectio Conciliorum Dionysiana II, and the Collectio Decretalium Dionysiana. They are of the utmost importance for the development of the canon law tradition in the West. Towards 500 a Scythian monk, known as Dionysus Exiguus, who had come to Rome after the death of Pope Gelasius 496, and who was well skilled in both Latin and Greek, undertook to bring out a more exact translation of the canons of the Greek councils. In a second effort he collected papal decretals from Suritius 384-89 to Anastasius II 496-98, inclusive, anterior therefore, to Pope Symmachus 514-23. By order of Pope Hormisdas (514–23), Dionysus made a third collection, in which he included the original text of all the canons of the Greek councils, together with a Latin version of the same. But the preface alone has survived. Finally, he combined the first and second in one collection, which thus united the canons of the councils and the papal decretals. It is in this shape that the work of Dionysus has reached us. This collection opens with a table or list of titles, each of which is afterwards repeated before the respective canons, then come the first fifty canons of the Apostles, the canons of the Greek councils, the canons of Carthage 419, and the canons of preceding African synods under Aurelius, which had been read and inserted in the Council of Carthage. This first part of the collection is closed by a letter of Pope Boniface I, read at the same council, letters of Cyril of Alexandria and Atticus of Constantinople to the African Fathers, and a letter of Pope Celestine I. The second part of the collection opens likewise with a preface, in the shape of a letter to the priest Julian, and a table of titles, then follow one decretal of Suritius, twenty-one of Innocent I, one of Zosimus, four of Boniface I, three of Celestine I, seven of Pope Leo I, one of Gelasius I and one of Anastasius II. The additions met with in Vol and Justel are taken from inferior manuscripts. Conciliar collections Topic Topic Collectio Conciliorum Dionysiana I Topic Shortly after the year 500, during the pontificate of Pope Symmachus 498 Dionysus collected and translated into Latin the canons of the major Eastern councils, including the so-called Canones Apostolorum, the decrees of the councils of Nicaea 325, Ancyra 314, Neocasaria 314 times 320, Gangra 343 Antioch CA 328, Laodicea 343 times 3 380, Constantinople 381, Sardica 343, Chalcedon 451, and the so-called Codex Apiary Kazi, the last being a collection of dossiers that includes the canons, letters and acts pertaining to the council held in Carthage on 25 May 419. Dionysus did this at the request of Stephen, Bishop of Salona, and a certain, "'Dearest Brother Lawrence' Carissimus Frater Laurentius who, as we learn from Dionysus, preface to his collection had been offended by the awkwardness of the older precede translation single quote dot. it is not certain but it may have been within the context of the Simachan Laurentian dispute that these requests were made of Dionysus Eckhard Werbelauer reviving several older arguments has recently argued that Dionysus S collection was meant to stand in direct opposition to the views of Pope Symmachus, and thus it was likely to have won neither the favor nor acceptance of that pope, nor possibly at least at first his immediate successor and strong supporter, Pope Hormistus. Topic: <laughs> Collectio Conciliorum Dionysiana II. Topic. Shortly after preparing his first collection of conciliar canons, Dionysus prepared a second recension of the same name, to which he made important changes. He updated his translations, altered rubrics, and, perhaps most importantly, introduced a system of numbering the canons in sequence whereas the Dionysiana I had numbered the canons of each council separately. In the Dionysiana II the canons apostolorum were still numbered separately from 1 to 50, but now the canons of Nicaea to Constantinople were numbered in sequence from I to CLXV. Just. Dionysus says. 
as is found in the Greek authority that is in Dionysus's Greek exemplar. Dionysus also altered the position of Chalcedon, moving it from after the Codex Apiary to before Sardica, and removed the Versio Adice of the Canons of Nicaea from Codex Apiary found there in the Dionysiana I appended to the rescript of Atticus of Constantinople. Finally, he added an important collection of African canons to his second recension. Known today as the Registria Ecclesia Carthaginensis Excerpta, this large body of conciliar legislation from the earlier Aurelian councils was inserted by Dionysus into the middle of the Codex Apiary, that is between the canons and the letters of the 419 Council of Carthage, with the fabricated prefatory statement, and in that very synod i.e. Carthage 419 were recited the various councils of the African province that had been celebrated in bygone days of Bishop Aurelius. Recitata sunt etiam in Ista Synodo diursa concilia veniursae proeuntiae Africae, transactus temporibus Aurelii Carthaginensis Episcopi celebrata. Thus, the 137 African canons that make up Registria Ecclesia Carthaginensis excerpta in the Dionysiana II are actually a concoction of Dionysus's, a conflation of two earlier canonical collections of the African Church. The existence of a third bilingual Greek -Latin collection of conciliar canons, in which Dionysus removed the spurious canons apostolorum along with the African canons and the problematic canons of Sardica, can be deduced from a preface now extant in Novara, Bibliotheca Capitolare, XXX 66, written end of 9th century in northern Italy. Unfortunately, no copies of the text of this recension have survived. The fact that Pope Hormistas, noted supporter of the previous Pope Symmachus, commissioned this collection from Dionysus is significant for several of reasons. First, it indicates that Hormistas was interested in commissioning something like an authoritative collection of Greek canons for use in the West. Second, it also poses a problem for the theory that Dionysus was a staunch supporter of Lawrence's camp in the Symmachian Laurentian conflict several years previous. Werbelauer has attempted to explain, however, how an initially sour relationship between Dionysus and Hormistas could have improved over time through Dionysus's eventual capitulation to the views of the victorious Simachan faction. <laughs> Decretal collection some time after preparing his collections of conciliar canons but still during the pontificate of Symmachus, Dionysus compiled a collection of papal decretals Collectio Decretalium Dionysiana that he dedicated to one priest Julian, Eulinus Presbyter. Whether Dionysus composed this collection at Julianus's request or on his own initiative is not known, as his preface is ambiguous on this point. The collection includes 38 decretals written by Popes Suritius, Innocent I, Zosimus, Boniface I, Celestine I, Leo I, Gelasius, and Anastasius II. By far the greater number of decretals were from Innocent I, the reason for this is not certain, but it is possibly explained on the theory that Dionysus had access to a collection of Innocent's letters that was not found in the papal archives and that had not been available to previous compilers of decretal collections. While Dionysus S. Decretal collection would come to be the most important vehicle in the dissemination of late antique papal decretals throughout the early Middle Ages, by no means was it the first nor, at least in Dionysus's lifetime, the most influential. Rather, in the earliest days of the development of decretal collections, several relatively mysterious collections known as the Canones Urbanici, the Epistolae Decretales, and a third unnamed collection, one that served as the common source for the Collectiones Corbiensis and Pithuensis were in circulation. Dionysus would have been familiar with these collections, and indeed drew on some of them. But the fact that he felt compelled to compile his own collection of papal decretals speaks to his being unhappy with the quality and coverage of other such collections that were available at the time. Topic: <laughs> Collectiones combined. Topic: So far as can be known, Dionysus did not package his conciliar and decretal collections together, nor is there any evidence that he intended them to combine. In fact, given the many differences between the collections in terms of genre, themes, tone, style, chronological and geographical coverage, and possibly even jurisdiction—his decretal collection was, after all, less oecumenical in its conception than the collection of conciliar decrees. 
In all likelihood he viewed their creation as entirely separate enterprises with entirely separate end products, intended for dissemination in separate contexts for entirely different uses. Nevertheless, the two collections were eventually joined together by Dionysus's readers to form a combined collection of conciliar and papal decrees. This combined collection of conciliar and decretal canons went on to become widely popular and served as the bedrock for many subsequent variations on Dionysus's original collections, and it is to versions of such combined collections rather than the three, four originally separate collections that modern scholars typically refer when they use the title Collectio Dionysiana. Topic: <laughs> Influence and Importance. The Dionysian collections exerted considerable influence on the development of canon law both within Italy and in other parts of Western Europe. In fact, no other Italian collection achieved as much success outside of Italy than did Dionysus's. As mentioned, the collection in its combined form was soon and continually supplemented and augmented, and by the 8th century numerous modified forms could be found throughout the West. There were gaps in the work of Dionysus, he seems, in particular, to have taken the papal decretals not from the archives of the Roman Church, but from previous compilations, hence certain omissions, which need not arouse any suspicion of the authenticity of documents nor quotes, as to certain Catholic apologists. In spite of its defects this collection far surpassed all previous efforts of the kind, not alone by its good order, but also by the clear, intelligible text of its version, and by the importance of its documents. Very soon it superseded all earlier collections and was much used celebarimo USU, especially in the Roman Church, says Cassiodorus. It became popular in Spain and Africa and even before Charlemagne had found its way into Gaul and Britain. It was the medium by which the African canons reached the East. Copyists used it to correct the text of the other collections, a fact not to be lost sight of at the risk of taking an interdependence of manuscripts for an interdependence of collections. Despite its authority of daily use and its occasional service in the papal chancery, it never had a truly official character. It even seems that the popes were wont to quote their own decretal letters not from Dionysus, but directly from the papal registers. In time the Collectio Dionysiana, as it came to be known, was enlarged and some of these additions entered the Collectio Hadriana which Pope Adrian I sent to Charlemagne, and which was received by the bishops of the empire at Aix-la-Chapelle in 802. It is none other than the «Collectio Dionysiana», with some additions in each of its two parts. In this shape it acquired and kept the title of «Codex Canonum». Neither the action of Pope Adrian nor the acceptance by the Synod of Aix-la-Chapelle conferred on the book an official character, or made it a code of universally obligatory laws, with much greater reason may it be said that it did not thereby become an exclusively authoritative code of ecclesiastical law. Manuscripts <inaudible> 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 Collectio Conciliorum Dionysiana I Topic Topic See also Topic Collections of ancient canons Topic References Topic Topic Notes Topic Topic External Links Topic The Collectio Dionysiana, Carolingian Canon Law Project